This is a tutorial on understanding properties of logarithms. The first thing that we're going to talk about in this tutorial are some basic properties of logarithms. The first one is if we ever take the log of the number 1, that's always equal to 0. So the log of whatever base, doesn't matter what the base is, of 1 is always equal to 0. So for example, if we have the log with a base of 3, of the number 1, that's equal to 0. The natural log of 1, also equal to 0. This is because if we take this log base 3 of 1, and that's equal to 0, and we write this as an exponential, this comes out to be 3 to the 0 power is equal to 1. So regardless of what the base is, if you're ever taking the log of 1, the only answer is 0. Another logarithm property is that if you take the log of the same number that your base is, that's always equal to 1. So if we had the log base 3 of 3, that's equal to 1. Again, I can rewrite this as an exponential. This would be 3 to the first power it has to be equal to 3, which makes sense. So if we had the log base 4 of 4, that's equal to 1. The natural log of e, that's also equal to 1. So if your base and whatever's inside your log is the same, that's always equal to 1. Another property is if we have a logarithm in the exponent of another term and the base of that logarithm is the same as the base of our exponent, then whatever's inside the logarithm is what we're equal to. So if we had 4 to the log base 4 of 7, well, that's just equal to 7. If we were to rewrite this exponential here, 4 log 4 of 7 is equal to 7, this would be 4 as our base of a logarithm of the number outside, so the log base 4 of 7 is equal to whatever our exponent is, so log base 4 of 7. Well, that makes sense. So if you ever have the base of an exponent and then your logarithm is in the exponent with the same base, then just take whatever numbers inside that log because that's what it's equal to. Now if we ever have the log with the same number and the same base but to some power, then our answer is just that power. So if we have the log base 5 of 5 cubed, then the answer is just 3. If we had the natural log of e squared, well, that's just equal to 2. The log of 2 with a base of 2 to the fourth power, that's just equal to 4. So if your base and what's inside the log is the same, then you can just take your exponent as your answer. Otherwise, it's equal to 1. The next thing that we're going to talk about is the one-to-one -one property. Logarithms are one-to-one -one functions. So if you ever see the log with some base of some number, and that's equal to the log with the same base of a different number, then these two numbers must be equal. So if I have the log base 2 of x is equal to the log base 2 of y, that means x has to be equal to y. So let's look at these examples here, we have log base 4 of 2x is equal to the log base 4 of 24. This is the log base 4 on both sides. So since we're taking the log base 4 of both of these numbers and they're equal, that means both of these numbers have to be equal. So 2x has to be equal to 24. And you can use this to solve for x, just divide both sides by 2 and you'll find out that x is equal to 12. Let's try this again. Here we have the log base 5 of x minus 4, and that's supposed to be equal to the log base 5 of 2x. Well, we're taking the log base 5 of both of these numbers. So both of these numbers must be equal if you expect the log base 5 of both of these numbers to be equal. So we can say that x minus 4 is equal to 2x. Subtract x from both sides and we get x is equal to negative 4. So that's how you can use the one-to-one -one property to solve two logs that have the same base of different numbers, or equal numbers. 
The change of base property is another property of logarithms. If we have the log of the number n with a base of n, and we wish to change the base of our logarithm, then we can write this as the log of m with our new base, I call b, divided by the log, again with our new base, of our old base, n. So for example, if I had the log base 3 of 27, I could write that as the log base 10 of 27 divided by the log base 10 of 3. Same thing works for natural logs. If I had the log base 3 of 27, I could rewrite this as the natural log of 27 over the natural log of 3. If I want to change the base, I take my old number and put it in the numerator, and then my old base goes inside the log in my denominator. This is useful because most calculators only have a log button or a natural log button. But if you were asked to solve for the log base 3 of 27, you couldn't use either of these buttons. This log button, since it doesn't have a base listed, is the common log. It's the log base 10. So if you wanted to find out what the log base 3 of 27 is equal to, using your calculator, you would have to take the log base 10 of 27 and divide it by the log of 3, or the log 27 over the log 3. So let's find out what the log base 9 of 81 is equal to. Well, if I'm going to use my calculator, then I'm going to convert these into the common log, or the log base 10. So I'm going to say that the log base 9 of 81, this is equal to the log base 10, or the common log, of 81 divided by the log of 9. Now the log of 81, that's equal to about 1.8. 9, 1. The log of 9, that's approximately 0 0.95. Do the division, and this should be equal to 2. So if you ever need to change the base of your logarithm, you use the change of base property. Again, this is usually useful if you're trying to solve for a log in your calculator. Next, we're going to talk about the product property of logarithms. The product property of logarithms basically states that if we have the log of two numbers multiplied together, in this case m and n, well that's equal to the log of m plus the log of n, as long as we have the same base throughout the expression. So for example, if we had the log base 2, of 4 times 7, this would be equal to the log of 4 plus the log of 7, as long as we have the same base, in this case 2. This works in the other direction as well. If we had the log of 10 and the log of 3 added together, and we saw that these had the same base, in this case 5, well then the log of 10 plus the log of 3 would be equal to the log of 30. Because again, that log has a base of 5, and 30 is just our 10 times our 3. The next property of logarithms that we're going to discuss is the quotient property of logarithms. This is just like the product property, except here we're dealing with division. And the quotient property tells us that if we're taking the log of two numbers, one divided by the other, in this case m divided by n, and that's equal to the log of m minus the log of n. Again, we have to have the same base throughout our expression. So for example, if we had the log of 10 divided by 3, we could rewrite that as the log of 10 minus the log of 3. And once again, you have to make sure that you have the same base. This works in the other direction as well. Here we have the log of 20 minus the log of 7. Now the first thing you have to check and make sure that these have the same base, which they do, it's base of 8. So then the log of 20 minus the log of 7 is just the log of 20 divided by 7. And again we keep our base of 8. 
Now the last logarithm property that we're going to discuss in this tutorial is the power property. This occurs when we're taking the log of a number with an exponent. Here we have the log of m to the n power. Well if you have an exponent on the number that you're taking the log of, you can pull that exponent out front of your log sign and just multiply the log of m by that exponent. So if we have the log of m to the n power, that's equal to n times the log of m. An example here would be the log base 3 of 4 to the x. Well we would take this x and we would pull it out front. So the log base 3 of 4 to the x is equal to x times the log of 4. Here's another example. We have log base 9 of x to the fifth power. Well I can take this fifth using the power property and pull it out front of our log sign. So this is going to become 5 times the log base 9 of x. These three logarithm properties that we have learned are typically used to simplify logarithms. Here if we're told that the log base 10 of 9 plus the log base 10 of 4 minus the log base 10 of 6 and we wanted to simplify this expression. Well the first thing we do is we check and see if we have the same base which we do. Now if I take these first two logs, this log of 9 and the log of 4, these are added together. Which means I can use the product property and write this as the log base 10 of 9 times 4. Well 9 times 4 is 36 so this is the log base 10 of 36. Now let's not forget this log of 6. If we bring this down, this is still minus the log base 10 of 6. And these are subtracted, which means I can use the quotient property. This is the same as the log base 10 of 36 divided by 6. Because these two logs are subtracted, that means when I convert this into one log, our numbers are divided. So this is the log base 10 of 36 divided by 6, and 36 divided by 6 is just 6. So this is going to be the log base 10 of 6. Let's try this again. Here we have the log base 3 of x minus 5 times the log base 3 of y. Well the first thing I'm going to notice here is I have a subtraction sign. So I'm going to use the quotient property. But before I use the quotient property, I want to look at this second term that I have here, this 5 log of y. Here I'm going to use the power property in reverse. I'm going to take this 5 and I'm going to make it the exponent of y. So this is going to be the log of x minus the log of y to the fifth power. Now that I've taken that constant out there, I can combine my log of x minus the log of y to the fifth. Using the quotient property, this is going to be the log base 3 of x divided by y to the fifth power. Now sometimes we use logarithm properties to do the opposite of a simplification. Sometimes we intentionally expand logarithms because they're easier to solve when they're expanded. So let's see how we can expand these logarithms. Our first example is the log base 10 of 5x to the fourth. Now this is the same as the log of 5 times x to the fourth. And since the 5 and the x to the fourth are multiplied together, that means I can use the product property. This is the same as the log of 5 plus the log of x to the fourth. 
Now I'm almost done except my second term here has an exponent on it. This 4, I can use the power property and pull it out front of my log sign. So this is going to expand out to be the log base 10 of 5 plus 4 times the log of x. Let's try this again. Here we have the log base 5 of x squared divided by y cubed. Now here I have two variables being divided. I have an x squared divided by y cubed. And since they're being divided, I can use the quotient property. I can write this as the log, and remember to keep your base, so this is base 5, of x squared minus the log of y cubed. Now that I've separated the division, I can use the power property and pull my exponents outside the logs. I have an exponent on the x and on the y. And this is going to become 2 times the log of x minus 3 times the log of y. So that is our final expanded form of log base 5 of x squared divided by y cubed. And that completes the tutorial on logarithm properties.